All right, Cubs fam, we got a really tough galactic challenge today, and I am going to talk to you about how you can turn your night sister acolyte into an absolute terror and beat this galactic challenge. Only one relic character being used in my set. Go ahead and punch it, Chewie. Like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about this galactic challenge here right now. Now, out of all of the galactic challenges, this may be one of the first ones that really requires a lot of that 15 minutes that they've got uh, slated for you in the galactic challenge. Now, this is a galactic challenge, in my opinion. You're going to need to look at your mods. And if you've got a full de decked out Relic Night Sister team, this may not be a struggle for you. This is what my Night Sisters look like. And I am actually... actually okay, oh, I actually have two Relic characters. I, I said in the intro, one Relic character. What I'm using here is not Daka. And I'm using Talzin, Zombie, Asajj, Lead, Acolyte, and Spirit. And the reason for this is you actually want your Night Sisters to die a lot, which I'm going to talk about here in just a second. And the idea here is you're going to hide Acolyte in the corner, and you really want your Acolyte to have as much offense as possible. I loaded her with a crazy offense set. I'm finding offense primary. I'm finding offense secondary. Here's a 7.06 offense secondary. I do think you want crit damage in there. Offense on the, the arrow. No speed necessary. Uh, she's going to gain that speed here. We'll talk about that. And so juice up your Acolyte with as much offense as you can. And this will work much, much, much quicker, I think, if you've got a Relic Acolyte. Mine's only gear 12, and so it took a little bit of time and so let's go talk a little bit about how this match unfolds then i got some footage here we'll skip around a little bit it's, a, it's almost a 15 minute battle so i won't show you the full 15 minutes uh but here's here's the kicker you got to look at the modifiers for this galactic challenge now the enemy here whenever a rebel scores a critical hit on their turn they have 100 percent chance to attack again you don't need to worry a ton about that that can sometimes just slow you down um the limitless or the um the dark magic is every 10 turns, all defeated characters are revived at 50% health. So this is going to work for you and against you. What that ends up meaning is you need to kill all of the Phoenix characters within 10 turns. And those Phoenix characters are thick. And so you need to ramp up your offense as much as possible on this. Limitless Magic is where Acolyte being tucked in the corner will help. Whenever an ally is revived, all of the Night Sister allies gain Ikor stacking, which can't be copied. Now this will reset when you die. And so you need to make sure Acolyte never dies. Because she stealths on her basic, that won't be a problem. Not a lot of AoE damage from this Phoenix team. Uh, plus 5% health, max protection, offense, and speed. And so that's why you want to ramp up that offense as much as possible on your Acolyte. And then you can see some pretty good things happening here. Um, so let me talk to you a little bit about attack strategy. All right? Auto. <laughs> Auto is your friend, especially at the beginning. Now, towards the end of this battle, we'll skip to the end. You will want to cut. You will want to kind of manage the auto. Now, there are probably some idealistic attack moves you could make by completely coming off auto. I got this done twice, so you're seeing my second run here after I got all of my feats done with this. Which, if you win this battle with Night Sisters, you should get all of the feats. Um, but the the reason why I kept it on auto is because. Before I actually successfully completed this battle, I timed out, yes, timed out probably three or four times, which my entire morning has been preoccupied with this uh, because it just took me so long. The difference maker in the battle was when I just kind of caved and said, all right, I'm just going to put as much offense as I can on Acolyte. Now, you notice here, every time that somebody dies, Acolyte is getting one stack of Ikor. And every time she gets that one stack of Ikor, she's gaining 5% offense. And so by the end of this battle, we'll, we'll skip ahead here. We'll, let's jump ahead to right about here. We're at 83 stacks of Ikor. That's going to get higher and higher and higher as the battle goes on. And then it becomes a consideration of just keeping all of the Phoenix characters as low as you can and finding an opportunity that presents itself for you to blitz all of them down that takes a little bit for that opportunity to present itself and it does require a little bit of finagling now uh, an option something that i actually did have success with i didn't do it in this battle i, I don't think you have to do this 
uh, but you can benefit yourself by doing a uh, basic auto for a while that's helpful for a couple reasons number one without your special abilities you're applying less debuffs um which it's a little bit challenging to apply debuffs. you see here when when talzin does her plague it kind of works against you the counters help because talzin dies you get more stacks of ichor uh but it also heals up the phoenix because of Kanan's special ability and so that's something you might try if you're struggling i just kept it on full auto for this battle and it ended up being a success um so just just something to keep in mind uh but you really do want to be off basic auto at the end if you leave basic auto on i definitely recommend either coming off basic auto or if you feel like you have enough time just doing a manual attack because you really need Asajj's aoe especially i think this will also this battle will also be a lot easier if you have a relic Asajj. my Asajj is not relic i've got a gear 12 Asajj. And so it probably would have been a lot better because right, right at the end here, you'll see that AoE damage from Massage, very, very helpful. AoE damage from Talzin, not as much. And the Phoenix Squad heals itself so much that Plague really doesn't help you in this, which is a big reason why I'm not bothering with Talzin lead here. Asajj is in the leadership ability because she adds the offense on her leadership ability, which again is extra offense over to Night Sister Acolyte, who's now up to... 99 stacks of Ikor. And so you see here at the end of the battle, it's kind of a tag team of Asajj and Acolyte. I would really also love to find a way, I, I think a, a good strategy if for those of you struggling, a couple things that you could probably also try that I ended up not needing to, but I was about ready to try. Um, for Asajj, loading her up with as much health as you can to try to keep her from dying. Uh, you'll notice those stacks of Ikor do reset. Uh, when you die. So right now, Asajj is up to 35. Once you get to a certain point, it gets very hard to kill that character. Um, so, But Asajj still will find ways to die. So it, it might be good to either modding or uh, find find attack strategy ways to keep Asajj alive. Um, that could help. That might be a lot easier at Relic. Another idea that I thought about, ended up not needing to do, is make your zombie a paper zombie. Just take all the mods off zombie. Um, big kicker here is you really don't need... Uh, stuns. You need to try to stun, but stunning sometimes works against you uh, because if you stun, then you die less, right? You really need to die a lot so that you can get your Acolyte as ramped up as possible. You see here, even in this battle, three minutes and 55 seconds left of the battle. This might be where the run gets completed. Let's see if we get it right here. You notice here, Asajj gonna do... Oh, yep. So we don't get it because Talzin does her AoE and everyone comes back. But when you get to this point, when you get to this point, a big a big consideration is try to keep everyone's protection off. Bounce your attacks around and find your opportunity to do your big hit. Uh, if you could keep everyone down and re prevent them from recovering as much as you as they can, then at least you're you're getting them uh, you're you're starting ahead of the game. And there you go. There there's the win right there. And so just a couple considerations. I hope that is helpful for you guys. Uh, when when you're approaching this, I, I know this this one I didn't think I could do it for a while, uh, but when I started playing around with the mods and playing around with the attack strategy, it started feeling a lot more manageable. Um, another reason why I actually recommend this team comp instead of taking Daka in, Daka was really tempting to use. I, I just I never don't use Daka with Night Sisters, uh, but Daka actually works against you for two reasons. Number one, um, she's very thick, especially if you have a relic. It takes a long time for them to kill her. Spirit is better because Spirit does more damage than Daka. Even at gear 12, she does more damage than my Daka. And Spirit dies fast, which gets you more stacks of Icar. Um, and another thing is uh, 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 we got all the stuns from Daka, which can also work against you. Again, you stun Ezra. It's less damage. It's less stacks of Icar. So it's, it's kind of a totally different way of thinking about this. Um, so anyway, I hope this video is helpful for you guys. I also want to uh, call out tonight Urzatron. And Cubs, I just got the challenge. Urz and I are going to be facing off in Grand Arena. Stay tuned to my Twitter, at CubsFanHan, for announcements on specifically when. I just found out about this before I started recording this video. And so I don't have specific information on when that's going to be. So be sure to follow me on Twitter. All of that will be announced there. Get hype. All right, fam. I'm out of here. Thank you so much for joining me for the video. And as always, my brothers, don't forget.